Hi everyone, it's Mrs. King Crosby. Today we'll continue with our first lesson in chapter two titled, Can You Change It Back? We'll be learning and testing the concept that properties of substances may change after the substances are heated or cooled and returned to their original temperature. Activity one is testing our first glue. Engineers test their designs to find out whether they meet their design goals. Today, we'll complete the sticky test we set up in the last lesson. We're going to test the stickiness of our first glue mixture. Remember that in science, a test is when you try something out. Do you think that the engineer's designs come out perfectly the first time they're made? Well, no, not all the time. Ambrose, the jelly bean engineer, had to try more than once to meet his design goals. Don't worry if our first glue doesn't turn out perfectly. Maybe the beans will stick, maybe they won't. This is just the first glue we are making. So let's observe our dry sticky tests without touching them. Before we observe our dry sticky glue tests, let's ask ourselves, if I shake our test, sticky test very hard, and then another student shook our test very gently, would that be a fair test? Well, I would say no. And what can we do to make this a fair test? Well, like, let's make sure to shake our test the same way and the same number of times, like the last time we did this. So we'll pick up our test card and we'll shake it gently three times. Ready for our shake test? Well, here's our test card. And I'm gonna shake it gently three times. Ready? Shake. Do you remember this page that we worked on in our last lesson? Well, if you have your notebooks, let's turn to it. We can start recording our results of how many beans we still have left. As you remember, our mixture was three tablespoonfuls of flour, one spoonful of baking soda, and one spoonful of salt mixed with four spoonfuls of water. We put two beans on our test card and our result was that two beans stuck to the card. So our prediction was right. We thought two beans would stick and it sure did. When engineers test their ideas, they also make sure to reflect on the results and think about things that they may want to keep the same or things they may want to change. Here are some questions we can ask ourselves after our first glue test. What did you learn about your first glue mixture? What would you do differently? And how can you make your glue better to meet the design? So our two beans did stick, but it's okay if our beans didn't stick. Engineers often try things many times. What did Ambrose, the jelly bean engineer, do when the flavor he created didn't turn out how he expected? Well, he went back and he tried again. First, Ambrose would learn what he could about the ingredients he tried in his first test, just like we can learn from our glue test. And sometimes he would have to learn more about new ingredients. Then he would create another plan and then make new jelly bean flavors to test. Engineers don't always go through the design cycle in this exact order. We'll get to think about and learn some other ways that we can to improve our glue. Now we're on to activity two, introducing, can you change it back? Scientists, engineers, and readers use knowledge and evidence to predict what they may happen or what they may learn. As readers, we can make predictions too. We can use pictures, words, and ideas we learn as clues to predict what will happen or what we will learn next in the book. Let's make a prediction about the new book we're about to read today based on these clues. Well, we've been learning about properties of substances, and we've tested glue ingredients and been given a design challenge to make glue. Here are a few more clues about the book. Let's look at the title and the cover. The title says, can you change it back? Think about whether you want to change your prediction based on this new information. Well, I see a picture of a frozen popsicle and a melted popsicle. Now let's look on page three. I'll read the names of the first five sections. Heating and cooling, page four. Freezing water, page five. Burning wood, page seven. 
chilling a leaf, page 9, melting wax, page 11. Now, what do you predict the book will be about? Based on what we know about the title, the cover, and the information in the table of contents, I think this book might be about things that are heated and things that are cooled. I'm not sure why the title is, Can You Change It Back?, but I think we might find out as we read. Let's look on page number five. As I read this page, pay attention to the special format of this book. Freezing water. What happens when liquid water gets really cold? It freezes into solid ice. Instead of a flowing liquid, ice is a solid. It has a shape. Can you change the ice back into water by warming it up? Make a prediction before turning the page. Well, I know that water changes into ice in the freezer, and I think that it melts back into water again after I take it out, because I've seen that happen before. Have you? Now, make your own prediction about whether you can change ice back into water just by warming it up. Well, I do think you can change the ice back into water by bringing it back to its original temperature. Now, let's turn to page six. It says, yes. Ice is frozen water. It can be melted into liquid water. The melted ice is the same as the liquid water you started with. You can observe the liquid water carefully. You can look at it, feel it, and even taste it. You won't notice any differences. It's still water. My prediction was correct. Was yours? Now let's read page seven. Again, make a prediction about the answer to the question. Burning wood. If you burn wood, it turns into ashes and smoke. What if you cool the ashes off after the fire goes out? Can you change them back into wood? What's your prediction? Well, I'm gonna predict no, it will not change back into wood. It said no, my prediction was right. It says even after they cool off, ashes have different properties than wood. You can observe these differences easily. Wood is hard and brown. Ashes are crumbly and gray. After you burn wood, it is no longer wood. It has become something completely new. You can't change it back into wood. Activity three, reading, can you change it back? We'll be thinking about this question as we read. What can happen after a substance has been heated or cooled and returns to its original temperature? Now it's time to read. Can you change it back? Remember, you can pause the video and make predictions each time the book asks you to. Now it's time to read, can you change it back? You don't have this book at home, so I'll be reading it aloud to you. There are a couple of pages I'll fast forward because we already read them, so here we go. Can you change it back? By Fela Peck. Here's a table of contents. Heating and cooling. We heat substances up and cool them down every day. What happens to substances after they are heated or cooled? Do their properties change? Can you change the substances back into what they were before? Think of making popsicles out of juice. Juice is a liquid. A liquid doesn't have a shape, it flows. You can pour it into any container. Get the juice cold enough and it freezes. The liquid juice turns into a solid popsicle. A solid has a shape. The popsicle is still made of juice though. You can change it back. If you get the popsicle warm, it will melt. It will be the liquid juice again. The properties of the juice will be the same as they were before. This book tells about changing substances by heating or cooling them. As you read, predict whether you can change each substance back to the way it was. So I'll fast forward the freezing water page, because we already read that, and the burning wood. Let's go on to page number nine where it says, chilling a leaf. If you put fresh leaf into the freezer, it becomes hard and icy. What happens if you warm up the icy leaf? Can you change it back to the way it used to be? Make a prediction before changing the page. No, if you warm up an icy leaf, it becomes soggy, limp mess. 
Its properties have changed. You can observe that by seeing and touching the leaf. It is different from a firm, fresh leaf. You can't change an icy leaf back to the way it was before. Melting wax. Crayons are made out of wax. If you heat wax, it melts. You get liquid wax. What happens if you cool the wax? Can you change the liquid wax back into crayons? Make a prediction before turning the page. Yes, when liquid wax cools, its properties are the same as they were before. You can melt wax crayons and let them harden into new crayons into different shapes. The new crayons may be different, shaped differently, but they're still wax. You can still draw with them. Baking dough. What happens if you bake gooey cookie dough in a hot oven? You get crispy cookies. Can you change the cookies back into cookie dough? Make a prediction before turning the page. No, cookies and cookie dough have different properties. That's true even after the cookies cool off. You can observe these differences by touching, smelling, and tasting the cookies. You can't change crispy cookies back into gooey cookie dough. Firing clay. If you heat soft clay in a very hot oven, the clay hardens. Heating the clay this way is called firing clay. Once it is fired, can you change the clay back to the way it was? Make a prediction before turning the page. No, clay has different properties after it is fired. You can observe these differences easily by touching the clay. Fire clay is very hard and it breaks if you drop it. You cannot change it back into the soft clay it was before it was fired. Melting gold. What happens if you heat solid gold until it is very, very hot? It melts into liquid gold. Can you change it back into solid gold again? Make a prediction before turning the page. Yes, when the melted gold cools and hardens again, it has the same properties. It looks and feels the same. It is still gold. Cooling lava. When lava comes out of a volcano, it is a very hot liquid. After the lava cools off, you get solid rock. You can even walk on it. Can you change the rock back into liquid lava by heating it up again? Make a prediction before turning the page. Yes, well, you can't change it back, but our planet can. The rock could get pushed deep down inside Earth. Deep inside Earth, it gets so hot that rock can melt, and the rock would become liquid lava again. Its properties would be the same. What can you change back? And what you can't? After some substances are heated or cooled, their properties change. Those substances cannot go back to the way they were. Ashes can never turn back into wood, and cookies can never turn back into dough. However, other substances have the same properties after heating and cooling. Water and wax are two examples. You can change them back. A different kind of change, rearranging. In this book, we have talked about changes that happen through heating and cooling. Of course, there are other ways to change things. One way to change things is by rearranging them. Rearranging means putting pieces together in a new way. Imagine you have lots of pieces of a substance, such as popsicle sticks made out of wood. You can build a little house out of the sticks. Then you can take the house apart and build something else, like a frame. The popsicle sticks are still the same. They're made of the same substance. Even so, you can rearrange them to make lots of different things. Rearranging is a kind of change that you can usually change back. And our last page is the glossary. It gives us a definition of the vocabulary words in this book that are bolded. Now on to our last activity, activity four, discussing key concepts and questions. Let's look at the question we are trying to answer. What can ha happen after a substance has been heated or cooled and returns to its original temperature? Well, let's discuss the properties of substances from the book before and after they change temperature. What properties do fresh leaves have? Well, they're crispy, firm, and crunchy. 
And what properties do frozen leaves have? Well, frozen leaves are hard and icy. So what properties do frozen leaves have once they return to their original temperature? Well, after they're thawed out, they're soggy and they're limp. What can happen after a substance has been heated or cooled and returns to its original temperature? Well, sometimes the properties of substances that have been heated or cooled and return to their original temperature change, but sometimes the properties don't change. Here's our key concept. When a substance is heated or cooled, its properties can change. Our chapter two question, can heating a substance and returning it to its original temperature make a better glue? Well, in the next several lessons, we'll be thinking about how we can improve our glue mixtures. We've learned that after a substance has been heated or cooled and returned to its original temperature, its properties may change. In our next lesson, we'll begin to make observations that will help us predict whether heating one of our mixtures would make it even better for making a sticky glue. Well, that's all for today. I hope you guys had fun. I'll see you next time.